a solar panel that breathes like a plant, directly making fuel instead of electricity. According to the inventors, this hybrid panel can generate up to 250 liters of hydrogen per day, enough to potentially power a whole home for weeks or months. These claims grabbed our attention. Any system claiming to replace batteries is huge news, but such big numbers also made us cautious. We had to dive into the details and do the math ourselves. This idea actually started in academia. Around 2011, two engineers in Belgium embarked on a wild research project, mimicking an artificial leaf to split water into hydrogen using only sunlight and humidity from the air. The concept sounded crazy to many at first. Over the next decade, under the guidance of their professor, the team persevered. They tested hundreds of designs, solved tricky issues like capturing enough moisture from the atmosphere, and even developed low-cost catalysts so they wouldn't rely on precious metals. By the late 2000s, they had validated the concept, patented it, and even formed a startup to commercialize the technology. Now, a company is offering this all-in-one system to finally let homes make hydrogen fuel on site, a dream many thought was too futuristic to be true. Still, we have to be careful. When the company released promotional materials, the marketing was dazzling. They called the system unique worldwide and fully self-sufficient, claiming it could make hydrogen up to four times cheaper than normal methods. They even boasted it harvests all the water it needs from thin air. Phrases like 100% energy independence and air tap hydration sound like magic tricks. We've seen flashy tech claims before, things like eternal battery life or breakthrough fuel that didn't quite pan out. Why even consider hydrogen? The mission behind this technology is simple. Solve the biggest headache of solar power, which is storage. Anyone with a rooftop array knows the problem. A single cloud can drop your power by 90%, and at night, it's zero. Generating clean electricity is one thing. Saving it until you need it is the other half of the battle. In summer, you might make far more solar power than you can use, while in winter, you might struggle to cover basic needs. We need solutions that can bridge gaps of minutes, hours, or even months. Engineers often call this the holy grail of renewable energy. If this hybrid panel can truly store solar energy as hydrogen, it could be a game changer for how we handle power. Now, batteries are great for short-term storage. A home lithium-ion pack can charge and discharge very quickly and survive many thousands of cycles. But batteries struggle when you try to store energy for months. Imagine charging a battery fully in June and then only draining it in December. That's basically using only two of its thousands of possible cycles. You'd pay a fortune for almost no usage. For example, a Tesla Powerwall 2 holds 13.5 kilowatt hours and costs around $10,000. If you only cycle it twice a year, you're effectively throwing most of that money away. It's like buying a Ferrari engine to run a lawnmower. In practice, people wouldn't install such a big battery just for seasonal backup. It just doesn't pencil out. This is why huge battery solutions, like massive battery farms or pumped hydro, are proposed for very large projects. But for an average house, they're not practical. This is where hydrogen comes in. Instead of storing energy as electrons, you store it as molecules. You use electricity, from solar panels, to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen goes into tanks. Later, you burn the hydrogen in a fuel cell or a modified heater to get energy back, turning it back into electricity or heat and water. The round trip efficiency is lower. Maybe only 40 to 50% of the energy comes back as electricity. But hydrogen has a major upside it can be stored for months or years without significant loss, and you can store a lot of energy per tank. For example, 
a 50-liter hydrogen cylinder at high pressure might store on the order of 5 to 10 kilowatt hours of energy and costs a few hundred dollars. Compare that to batteries. 50 liters of hydrogen could keep a home running for a day or two. It's expensive at the moment, but if the hydrogen is made cheaply at home, it flips the cost argument. You pay mostly upfront for equipment, then use sunshine to fill the tank. So hearing 250 liters of hydrogen per day from a rooftop panel sounds like a big deal. Picture your roof covered with a row of these hybrid panels. Each day, they would pump out a stack of hydrogen gas into a storage tank. That could mean hundreds of kilowatt hours of energy stored as fuel every year. It feels like an amazing breakthrough. The house could be almost self-sufficient, with the hydrogen tank acting like a backup battery. And more importantly, it's energy you can use on demand later. For comparison, a home might use 3,000 kilowatt hours a year, so one panel would cover about 7% of that on its own. Five panels could do a significant chunk. And because the hydrogen doesn't leak or self-discharge, you can keep it from summer into winter. In practice, these panels act like a seasonal energy bank. During spring and summer, you slowly fill the tank with hydrogen. Then in fall and winter, you draw from it. It's a bit like charging a huge battery over months and discharging it later. You wouldn't use this system for instant peaks. You'd still rely on your everyday battery or the grid for quick changes. But for covering dark winter days, it could keep the essentials running. Of course, there's a catch. To use 250 liters per day of hydrogen, you need the hardware. You'd have a storage tank, like a heavy-duty propane tank, possibly placed in a garage or yard, and equipment to convert the H2 back to useful energy. Common ways are a fuel cell generator, quiet, efficient, but costly, or a hydrogen furnace, jachocho boiler, cheaper, but slightly less efficient. Compressing hydrogen usually requires a compressor that costs a few thousand dollars and uses some electricity to run. And safety-wise, hydrogen is flammable, so you'd need ventilation and leak detectors just like a gas system. These add upfront cost and complexity. In other words, the 250 liters per day spec sounds great, but the full system needs more than just the panel. We'd need to pay for tanks, compressors, and a fuel cell or burner too. None of these hurdles are impossible. Automotive and industrial sectors already use high-pressure tanks and fuel cells, so the technology exists. It might just need scaling down or cost reduction for home use. Some companies are even developing electrolyzers that output hydrogen at higher pressure directly, so a separate compressor isn't needed. And history tells us costs will fall with volume. Look at solar panels and batteries. They were once extremely expensive, and now you can buy them cheaply. Let's talk efficiency. The makers claim about 12 to 15% of sunlight is stored as hydrogen energy. At first, that might sound low next to normal panels, 20% plus. But remember, this number covers the whole process, sunlight to electricity to hydrogen. If you did it in two steps, say a 20% panel and a separate electrolyzer at 70% efficiency, so the integrated 12 to 15% is comparable. It's already notable because it includes everything from light capture to splitting water to releasing H2. It means we're not losing more energy than expected for these conversions. Future tech improvements, like better cells or catalysts, could raise that, but even 15% is quite respectable here. This also teaches a valuable lesson. Big, flashy numbers need context. Hearing 250 liters per day sounds amazing, unless you remember that's free fuel that builds up month after month. Both are true statements of the same output. Thanks for tuning in to this deep dive. Keep thinking like we did. 
Break down the big numbers, check the claims, but don't stop dreaming big. The future of energy might be bright, and maybe a little bit gassy. Stay curious, stay critical, and we'll catch you next time.